Hey guys, Zerka here and welcome back to my meal career mode series and uh, let's start off this episode going straight into a game against West Brom and as you can see from the team sheets uh, I'm handing Kurt Zuma his debut uh, in replacement for Luis Fuentes and you can see I've got Biragi or Biragi on the uh, substitute bench obviously lots of you guys kind of said that uh, maybe I shouldn't have signed him because he's a left back but I still I just felt, felt it was worth it the kind of pace that he had I felt it was worth it regardless of if playing him in centre back is out of position I think his pace was worth it because because he'd be able to keep up any single winger that anyone throws at me so as you can see all the cameras are on Zuma as it is his debut so they're all trying to see what's going to go down and see what kind of performance he's going to give us and we shall see ourselves and we start off in the ninth minute and he gets a header on a corner and nearly scores straight away in, in the first 10 minutes of playing for Millwall. Um, Nathan Ake gets through here in 11th minute, has a shot and that is saved. And uh, this game was very much a game of like end-to-end -end, uh, start, a very end-to-end -end start. And basically it was more of one of the games was whoever takes the first goal, whoever takes initiative and gets the first goal is going to win the game. And you see how breakthrough from Overdale, who after the nice goals from Bitten Court. And he tries to finesse it, but it hits the crossbar. And Piazon tries to follow it up, but that is then blocked down by one of the defenders. And again, Bittencourt picks up the ball. There's a nice chip uh, through ball over to P Vidal. He tries to slam it into the bottom right corner, but the goalkeeper saves that again. And uh, West Brom then break through. And uh, Alan Kardec finishes that. I don't, think, I don't know who Alan Kardec is. It must be one of their brand new signings they've got. Maybe he had come through the reserves or the youth squad. But uh, he scored the first goal of the game to make it 1-0 to West Brom. Vidal then has a shot here, and that is just goes narrowly wide. And it's like it just—I think it's one of those games that we were, we're going to be made to rue how our missed chances because we did miss a lot. I mean, lots of shots went wide. A uh, lot we got through quite a lot, and just didn't really give the finishing product that we needed, which is unlike us. Usually, we do have the finishing product, and Vidal is usually that person to give us that product. Um, it was the second half now in the 70th minute and uh, they scored to make it 2-0. Kardec scoring again after a nice cross put into him and he headers that into the bottom corner. Um, and Vidal gets ball in the second minute here, does a nice LT and RT dribble, cuts off, which I love doing. I do that all the time, both online and offline. And that was saved. Redmond then has a shot in the edge of the area as well, but that again, that is saved. It wasn't really that good of a shot and the follow-up was then there, but that wasn't a good header either. And I could say that it was one of those games where like we deserve to win, but I don't really think the shots that we provided were necessarily good enough to go in anyway, and they had a good enough goalkeeper to save the shots that we threw at him. Uh, so I can't really, can't really complain really. And there's one thing that you guys said to me that I should have done and haven't done, is sign a new goalkeeper. And I didn't really think about that, uh, because Cragno and Spires, yes, they're good goalkeepers with potential, but they're not experienced goalkeepers with a higher overall rating. That's what we need right now because I think when we come up against bigger teams, we're going to struggle because they could have two shots and score and I could have 20 shots and only score one. Um, so we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how it goes. I might have to start sign someone on loan or maybe try and just wait to hold it out till January and sign a new goalkeeper then. I sent out my scout another job, but this time I sent it into England. I believe I sent him out to Brazil last time. And then I also come out and showed you my career summary. See, I've played 112 games, 160, drawn 20 and lost 32. I just thought it was some, maybe some interesting things to show you. Also go back on my seasons and see how we've progressed as a team. So see, look, our biggest uh, transfer fee in the first season was 750000 for Wallison. Uh, we then had £1.4 as our biggest transfer fee in the second season. And then look, £12 million in the third season and we sold Wallison. Uh, for 10.5, you know, we signed him for 750,000 in the first season. So that's some serious profit we got right there. Again, I'm getting some more uh, job opportunities from uh, national teams, but not good enough national sides for me to join yet. Uh, definitely going to have to consider doing uh, accepting one soon, maybe shake the series up a bit and have some more uh, different stuff going on. Going to our next game here against Spurs. Now, Spurs, as I've seen uh, from looking, have been a team that have been very good. Uh, on this career mode series. Um, I think they came like second, maybe they might have even won the title in one of the previous seasons so far. They have a very strong squad and they're very good on FIFA anyway. And Gareth Bale and Adibayor together can be a deadly combo with, Adi uh, with Bale's p uh, pace to get past defenders and then his cross in to get, swing that in and Adibayor's head in to get that in. And so it always proves to be a deadly combo and you might see that in this game, you never know. Um, again, we had a lot of shots and uh, they, I think they have, is it Hugo Loris? In, is, I don't know, I'm going to say, say his name. But they have him in goal, and he's an absolute tank on this game, and that just was proven uh, in this game. It was just an absolute joke. I mean, it was just dirty. The amount of saves that he was pulling off was crazy. Bow whips in across there, and that was just headed just wide by Defoe, I believe. And Adebayo picks up the ball here, plays a nice free ball to Bow, and then Bow slots that into the back post and uh, scores that to make it 1 0 to Tottenham and does his uh, little heart celebration there. And. Uh, we're going to the second half now, we have a corner and uh, the ball falls to Piazza on the edge of the area after it's cleared out and then falls to Gabriel 
who then scores a nice CDM, picking up a goal there. And uh, that made it 1-0, and that brought us back into the game. And I definitely thought I could have a chance of winning this game, especially with the fact that I'd created so many chances in this game, but uh, Loris was keeping me out. So I think if maybe I broke the deadlock, maybe I could uh, pick up some more goals. But straight away, Bowers in the cross, and Adebayo gets his head on that to make it 2-1. And uh, that was one of those insta reply goals, and uh, that was just me pretty much over and done with. But I continue to pursue and try and find that uh, second goal. And Akita Ayman is showing off his pace here. Like he's, he's so pacey, he's so good. It's like it's like another Romeo Vidal, but a little bit faster version. But obviously not a striker, a winger version. And uh, he had that save. He tried to finesse it, but that was saved. And. Um, 90th minute here, and I was just trying to get the ball. So I was just, you know, when you like, hastily defend, you're like, just give me the ball. Yeah, it's so frustrated, you can't get the ball. And I was just pressing uh, B, spamming B left, right, and center, just trying to get the ball off them. And uh, I was punished for that, and they made it 3 1. Sandra picking up a goal there to make it 3 1. And uh, it's see Spurs now fifth in the league, and I've slumped down to 14th after that nice uh, win we got in the first game of the season against Everton. We were sitting in fourth, we're now down to 14th, only three points. And uh, but Everton are bottom of the table, so maybe it's just Everton are a weak side. And then we come against, up against Chelsea. Again, another really tough game straight after the Tottenham game. And they've got, they've got Robinho in the bench. And if you look at the rest of their team, it's a very different team to what they actually have in real life at this current moment in time. So maybe, I'm guessing they've made quite a lot of signings. And they have Lukaku up front as, a, as their main man. And straight away from kickoff, uh, they punished me straight, literally just so dirt. Nice little passing move. And Lukaku is there uh, to put that away in the second minute to make it 1-0. And... Uh, this, this was probably one of the toughest games I've played in career mode, not going to lie. They literally ripped me apart. And uh, again, 30 second minute, Felix Moses makes it 2-0. And I was sitting there thinking this could be an absolute demolishing because I literally had nothing. I was providing no chance. I was creating no chances for myself. As soon as I got into their half, they were just closing me down. And uh, I that was, had that chance there. Keys I whipped in the ball and Vidal had the shot, but that was saved by Czech. And again, I counter-attacked to the Keys I using the pace. And that was saved again by Czech. Tried to go to the near post. That did not work. And I came back into the game a bit in the second half. Had a few shots here and there. Um, see that shot there from Ramon Vidal that was saved. But the game finished 2-0. At least I was happy that I managed to hold it to a 2-0, to be honest. I mean, I think I stepped up my game since I can see that second goal because I didn't want to be demolished. I didn't want that embarrassment of us going to you guys. Oh, I just lost 6-0 to Chelsea. So I'm going to show you the table once more. And as you can see, uh, Arsenal are top with Chelsea second and Man United third. Uh, or basically all joint first. All with five wins and zero losses. Man City yet to lose a game as well. As we're up in sixth and us in 15th with only three points, one win and four losses with a uh, minus five goal difference. So it's not the best of situations right now, but West Ham are bottom of the league, which is always something that uh, any Millwall fan would be happy to see. And that is the end of today's episode. I'm sorry it's a bit shorter than usual. It's not usually the usual 10 minutes that it is. And that is because I actually haven't got any more footage left. I've actually caught up with the pre-recorded footage that I had. Uh, so now I have to go out and play some more career mode and get them some footage recorded. But anyway, if you enjoyed the video, then please do leave a like. If you want to check out my Will Moore Ultimate Team series, there is a link on the screen now. And uh, also, if you want to check out my Let's Play channel, which has Minecraft on it at the moment, but there will be more series on there soon, then you can subscribe to that by clicking on that little box there as well. And I shall see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye!